I'm your man, Tim Black. Welcome to another edition of Pause. And on Pause, we take one subject matter, one theme, and we be real black with it. Here's the idea behind that. A lot of times I'm watching like news, or when I'm watching shows in general, they're written by white people. Even when the talent's black, the writers are white. Even when the writers are black and the talent's black, the owners are white. And even when the writers are black and the talent is black and the owners are black, those three entities are worried about what white people are gonna say. So, you never really get to see black shit or hear black people talk free as freed men. Now, what's crazy about it is, you don't hear white people be too free either. You just think you do. See, you think you hear white people be free. They ain't free, Johnson. True story. Back when uh, I was in my early 20s, I worked for this company out of Arlington, Virginia that did computer analysis for the government, right? And I had a little position. It wasn't management, but it was, you know, run of the mill position. I worked around a lot of people. There was a guy that worked there with me. His name was Bill Davis. Now, Bill Davis was a white kid from a well-to-do family. His father owned a business that was booming. Bill came to work in a Hugo Boss suit. I never even knew what a Hugo Boss suit looked like. So I saw Bill's Hugo Boss suit. All I knew was the cut was bomb and it looked different. So me and Bill became friends. One day Bill told me he confided in me. He said, Tim, you are the first black guy's hand I ever shook. Cause see, I'm from a part of New Hampshire where there's no black people. And I was like, oh man, that brother never met black people before. Let me be on my worst behavior. Well, actually, I was Bill's supervisor. That was the crazy part. Affirmative action does work. We were talking one day about dress. That's what it was. And I was like, damn, man, I get tired of this, man. I got to wear this shirt and it's tie. I don't like wearing a shirt and tie, man. And Bill was like, me either. I'm like, but Bill, you wear a shirt and tie all the time. You got a Hugo Ball suit and other suits. I got a couple of shirts and two ties. He was like, man, just cause I'm white don't mean I like dressing up, man. He's like, Tim, if it was up to me, I'd be wearing cut off shorts with some flip flops and a t-shirt. I won't be wearing this shit. I wear this cause it's a uniform. And in my family, all the men had to wear the uniform. A shirt and a tie or a shirt jacket and a tie with whatever slacks or slacks with a shirt tie, or shiny shoes, or Oxfords with button down, with a blazer, with a tie, or, or tie with buckle mock, mock, mock buttons, or button mocks, whatever those are, with the flat front, with the straps over the, mock toe, mock toes with a strap, or with a tie, or a turtleneck with a blazer, with some slacks or some, you get the point. And I said, damn, man, TV been lying to me all this time. So the point is, they lie to us too. Not just to us, about us, they lie to us about white people. And white people, they lie to you about black people. And they lie to all of us through, you, through the use of Hollywood, through the use of stories, and just plain old fibbery. okay? So that's all it is. So the point is this, the reason why I tell you, the Tim Black pause show. Pause with Tim Black is where we get to be really black. That's because I don't answer nobody. I don't answer the white people. But I don't answer the white people. I don't got no white writers, no white writers. And I have no white paymasters other than subscribers and people that are Patreon. So, but more than that, I'm not trying to appease white folks. So white people can have white writers they're white talent with white writers, with white producers, working for a white company. But at the end of the day, they can't be themselves because they don't own it. They don't fucking own it. Pause. Wait, hold up, pause. No debate, no applause. Tighter the weight.